He was nervous and looked drawn as he posed for the cameras. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we'll be looking at the most infamous, scandalous, or otherwise shocking situations that occurred within the music industry and had significant repercussions for the artists and other parties involved. I went to his trial because I was a super fan at the time. Taylor Swift Masters Dispute In 2019, music mogul Scooter Braun purchased Big Machine, Taylor Swift's former record label, for a whopping $300 million. This deal granted Braun the rights to the master recordings of Swift's first six albums. When the news broke, Taylor posted a long letter on Tumblr, calling the Scooter Braun acquisition her worst-case scenario. The singer publicly expressed her frustration with the acquisition, stating that she had attempted to buy her masters but found the label's terms unfavorable. The controversy split the music industry and ignited a broader conversation about artists' rights. Following a suggestion by Kelly Clarkson, Swift decided to re-record all six albums so as to own the masters of the new versions. And so I just figured I was the one who made this music First, I can just make it again. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. Starting in 2021, she put out the re-recorded albums, featuring several previously unreleased tracks. Dubbed Taylor's version, these albums received widespread acclaim, contributing to Swift's unparalleled success. Prince changes his name to a symbol. Contractual disputes between music artists and their record labels have sometimes led to artists taking unconventional routes to free themselves. One notable instance involved legendary musician Prince, who in 1993 changed his stage name to an unpronounceable symbol, later known as the love symbol. This move was a protest against his record label Warner Brothers which had denied the release of Prince's music backlog and severely restricted his artistic freedom. As a result, the media began referring to him as the artist formerly known as Prince. So how did the artist formerly known as come about? Well, that came up through people's uh, uh, problem with, mainly the, the media's problem with not having a pronunciation for the symbol. During this period, Prince began releasing albums more frequently as a strategic maneuver to break free of his contract. In 1998, he moved over to Arista Records and reclaimed his original name two years later. Elvis the Pelvis On June 5, 1956, Elvis Presley made an appearance on the Milton Berle show that would continue to be talked about for decades. It wasn't Presley's first TV appearance, but it certainly was his most controversial. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. During a rendition of Hound Dog, the singer slowed things down and began sensually gyrating his pelvis. By today's standards, it's nothing of notes. But back in 1956, it caused a huge uproar from the mainstream media and religious groups. You ain't no friend of mine. For his provocative hip gyrations, Presley earned the nickname Elvis the Pelvis. A few months later, when he returned on The Ed Sullivan Show, Presley was reportedly filmed only from the waist up to keep the potentially swiveling pelvis out of sight. Madonna's Like a Prayer music video Throughout her career, Madonna has consistently faced criticism for her arts, often centered around its provocative themes and imagery. Life is a mystery. Perhaps her most controversial moment came with the release of the music video for her 1989 single, Like a Prayer. The clip took an unconventional approach to addressing racism, incorporating religious elements like the stigmata and burning crosses. Hear your voice. It's like an angel sighing. The song also appeared in a Pepsi commercial that was seen by approximately 250 million people worldwide. This sparked condemnation from religious groups, leading to a call for a Pepsi boycott. As a result, the company pulled the commercial and terminated its deal with Madonna. Despite the uproar, Like a Prayer became a massive success, topping the charts in several countries. Pray, 
Judas Priest Subliminal Message Trial On December 23, 1985, James Vance and Raymond Belknap made a pact to take their own lives with a shotgun. I think he was affected by the music he was listening to. While Belknap died instantly, Vance initially survived the self-inflicted wound, but also passed away three years later. The families of both men later filed a lawsuit against the heavy metal band Judas Priest, alleging that subliminal messages in their song Better By You, Better Than Me had prompted the tragic acts. Everybody, everybody, everybody knows. The trial unfolded in 1990, during which the band vehemently denied causing intentional harm to their fans. Ultimately, the court ruled in favor of Judas Priest, concluding that the alleged subliminal messages were merely coincidental and not a direct cause of the deaths. I, I got the distinct feeling that the judge was thinking, oh dear, you know, this is, these guys are right, you know, I've been, I've been led to believe one thing when, like in all things, there are two sides to every story. Kanye West's anti-Semitic remarks. Kanye West has often found himself in hot water for his controversial views and comments. George Bush doesn't care about black people. In October 2022, after being locked out of his Instagram account for yet another contentious post, the rapper tweeted an anti-Semitic remark. The tweet sparked a huge backlash, leading to a suspension from the platform. Consequently, West faced several professional repercussions. He was dropped by his talent agency and lost a series of business partnerships with the likes of Adidas and Gap. The letter says, quote, we urge Adidas to reconsider supporting the Yay product line and to issue a statement making clear that the Adidas company and community has no tolerance whatsoever for anti-Semitism. Despite these consequences, West seemed unfazed. A few weeks later, he appeared on the Infowars show with Alex Jones, where he doubled down on his troubling views. It wasn't until December 2023 that West posted an apology in Hebrew on Instagram, addressing his anti-Semitic remarks. I'm like completely shocked that he's even released the apology. Led Zeppelin's Mud Shark incident. At the peak of their success in the late 1960s and early 70s, English rock band Led Zeppelin gained notoriety for their tales of debauchery while on tour. When it comes to myths or legends in the history of music, there's one that stands well beyond almost any other. One incident in particular, which occurred in 1969 at the Edgewater Inn in Seattle, became infamous and further contributed to Led Zeppelin's controversial image. According to various sources, members of the band, particularly drummer John Bonham and manager Richard Cole, engaged in sexual activities with a groupie, which involved a two-foot-long mud shark. So the question becomes, where is the truth, if there's any, in this iconic tale of rock and roll bad behavior? Although some specific details remain unclear due to varying accounts, the incident became a controversial tale in rock history and still persists in the band's legacy. Frank Zappa later immortalized it in his 1971 song, The Mud Shark. The Mud Shark Dancing Lesson. The murders of Tupac Shakur and the Notorious B.I.G. The relationship between hip hop legends Tupac Shakur and the Notorious B.I.G. was a complicated one. Tupac became obsessed with the idea that Biggie had tried to kill him. While well, I'm in jail, strangers is telling me, yo, you don't know? Biggie homeboy shot you. The two were initially close friends who worked and traveled together. However, things soured following a 1994 shooting involving Tupac, after which they both became embroiled in the heated East Coast versus West Coast hip hop rivalry. That was all about Versace. You copy my style. Five shots couldn't drop me. I took it in smell. In September 1996, Tupac was gunned down in a drive by shooting in Las Vegas. Six months later, Biggie suffered a similar fate. This time, in Los Angeles. Speculation quickly arose that both murders were linked and possibly related to the rap feud. Despite extensive investigations, the cases went unsolved without any concrete leads until 2023, when Dwayne Keith D. Davis was arrested and charged in connection with Tupac's murder. He's repeatedly proclaimed he played a role in the drive-by shooting of Tupac Shakur nearly three decades ago. Sinead O'Connor rips up picture of the Pope. On October 3, 1992, Sinead O'Connor appeared as the musical guest on Saturday Night Live. Everywhere is war. During her performance, O'Connor made an unexpected move that would define the rest of her career. 
She held up a picture of Pope John Paul II and tore it into pieces while urging the audience to fight the real enemy. This act was a protest against the Catholic Church's mishandling of sexual misconduct cases involving minors. While undoubtedly a noble cause, the move triggered a huge uproar, leading to O'Connor receiving a lifetime ban from NBC. Once a rising star with great promise, the Irish singer-songwriter's career effectively came to an end. However, in the years since, public perception of her has largely changed. Yes, it is offensive to people because they've built their lives on, on this belief, and it is going to be offensive, yes. 2004 Super Bowl halftime show controversy. Super Bowl 38 was an intense game between the Carolina Panthers and the New England Patriots, culminating in the Patriots securing their second title in three years. However, most people only remember it for a controversial incident during the halftime show. Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake were performing together when he accidentally exposed her breast on live TV. Termed a wardrobe malfunction, the incident was broadcast to approximately 150 million viewers and had significant repercussions, particularly for Jackson. Did anybody happen to see the Super Bowl? Her songs and music videos were blacklisted and her invitation to the upcoming Grammys was rescinded. Beyond the immediate consequences, the controversy had a lasting impact on media censorship and highlighted the unequal treatment of female artists in the music industry. A lot of it I did not see, but obviously you couldn't get away from it because it was everywhere. Payola. The idea of corruption within the music industry is nothing new. It also takes many forms, one of them being payola a term used to describe the taking of a bribe, financial or otherwise, in exchange for radio airplay. Payola in our business was a record company or an artist coming in saying, hey, I got a new record coming out, here's 150 bucks. This practice was commonplace between record labels and DJ personalities for decades, until congressional investigations into payola directly impacted such beloved radio hosts as Dick Clark and Alan Freed. The latter was fired as a result of his association with Payola. He believed that rock and roll was the music to come, and he was right. The only problem is that all the Payola talk and everything killed him as far as getting anything. While DJs in general were no longer put in charge of directly influencing or deciding radio programming and which music would be played on air. For better or for worse, the wild, wild west of radio was over. The chicks call out the president. During the early days of the Iraq war, Natalie Maines, singer of the popular country group then known as the Dixie Chicks, took the stage in England and spoke her mind. Maines introduced the band's song, Travelin' Soldier, with a comment which stated, in part, We're ashamed the president of the United States is from Texas. Reaction was swift and harsh for the chicks after the news of the statement reached the U.S., with some fans calling for a boycott of the band, while others sent Maine's threatening letters. The publicity office had to close down their internet. Sony has to have extra security out the, out of the, uh, outside of the building, and I'm just feeling responsible. The uproar would eventually subside after Maine's publicly apologized directly to the president, but the damage done was never really repaired. If the president's watching tonight, we hope not, don't we? <laughs> Want to say something? Your show's not long enough. Two live crew arrested for obscenity. These days, not much in the music world or otherwise shocks us, with much of society now desensitized towards sex or violence. Don't keep thinking that we will quit. We'll always stand and never sit. This wasn't exactly the case back in the late 80s, however. A prime example being an incident involving the Miami hip hop group Two Live Crew. Their 1989 album, As Nasty As They Wanna Be, landed the group in hot water with Florida officials after it was deemed obscene by a U.S. district court. Record store owners were even arrested for selling the album. Did you expect that kind of response? No, not really. I mean, you know, it was a shock. It was a shock. Two live crew were arrested after performing the material at a local club and were forced to defend their right for free speech in courts. The ruling was eventually overturned, in the process making As Nasty As They Want To Be 
a bona fide smash hit. Because this is the land of the free, the home of the brave, and two live is what we are. Millie Vanilli lip sync scandal. The year was 1990, and the German pop group Millie Vanilli were riding high upon a wave of incredible success. Girl, you know it's true. Uh, ooh, 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 I love you. The duo even nabbed a Best New Artist Award from the Grammys that year and seemed poised for MTV superstardom. Then, as they say, it all came crashing down. It was revealed that Millie members Rob Pilatus and Fab Morvan hadn't actually sung any of the songs on their record and lip-synced all of their live performances. The Grammy was taken away. They were dropped by the record label and sales dried up. Not even an attempted comeback using Rob and Fab's real voices could save Millie Vanilli from becoming one of the decade's most infamous musical casualties. We felt like we were abandoned by everyone, that's what it felt like, because when, when the news came out, we were the ones that people were focusing on. The fact of the matter is, there were a lot of people that were involved. Norwegian black metal and the murder of Euronymous. It would be easy for the uninitiated to see the Norwegian black metal scene as something straight out of the cinema. Truth is stranger than fiction, however, as evidenced by the case of Euronymous, guitarist for the influential black metal band Mayhem. The musician born Oystein Arseth was stabbed to death in his Oslo home by Christian Varg Vikernes, a former bandmate. Varg Vikernes, also called Greven, blev sammen med sin 22-årig gamle medtiltalte fra Trondheim, kjent skyldig i overlagt drap i Eidsivating lagmannsrett i dag. Rumors flew as to the motives behind the killing, ranging from finances and jealousy to competing against other violent acts performed by other musicians within the black metal scene. Varg would serve nearly 15 years of a 21-year sentence before being paroled in 2009. Chris Brown Assault Charges Rihanna and Chris Brown were a popular R&B it couple amongst their respective fans until one incident changed things forever. Brown turned himself into police in February 2009 on charges that he physically assaulted Rihanna during a verbal altercation. The incident would leave Rihanna with visible injuries to her face and immediately caused a huge backlash against Brown, who up until that point had enjoyed sizable chart success. Please don't judge me. Brown canceled an appearance at the Grammy Awards that year and saw a number of his lucrative endorsement deals go up in smoke. He would plead guilty to felony assault charges in June and received a deal of five years probation, community service, and counseling. I fell in love with that person. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing that that's the type of person that I fell in love with. Gary Glitter arrested for possession of inappropriate material. 1970s glam icon Gary Glitter earned himself a deserving fall from grace when it was revealed that he had been in the possession of inappropriate material involving youth. He had just one critical request. He looked the technician in the eyes and said, don't look at my files. Glitter served a short prison sentence, after which he fled the UK and moved between various countries where he continued to engage in unlawful contact with minors. In November 2005, Glitter was arrested in Vietnam for these activities and sentenced to three years in prison. He shared a cell with 18 other foreign inmates. He only avoided hard labor because of his age. Following his sentence, he was deported to the UK and added to the sex offenders registry. Since then, he has racked up even more sex crime convictions for previous incidents and has been in and out of prison. Unless he lives to be 88, he'll likely spend the rest of his life behind bars. R. Kelly Video Scandal In 2002, R&B singer R. Kelly was gearing up to perform at the Winter Olympics. At the same time, news broke in Chicago about a video which allegedly depicted him engaging in improper behavior with an underage girl. Kelly denied the accusations, yet a search of his Florida home turned up more evidence, which furthered a second case against him. His eventual trial was fraught with delays, but the jury ultimately acquitted the singer on all charges in June 2008. Kelly faced several other accusations over the years, but it wasn't until the release of the 2019 docuseries Surviving R. Kelly that serious consequences materialized. 
I had to give him an update about everything. Like, if I was about to brush my teeth, I had to let Rob know. If I wanted to take a shower, he had to know. He was arrested and tried on multiple charges eventually receiving a combined 31-year prison sentence. This is a significant outcome for all victims of R. Kelly, and especially for the survivors who so bravely testify about the horrific and sadistic abuse. Phil Spector is tried for murder. By all accounts, Phil Spector was a legend of the music industry. He became a millionaire before the age of 21, and by the 1960s, he had 23 records in the top 50. A singer, songwriter, and producer extraordinaire who enjoyed untold success and influence throughout his career. Spectre's personal demons and eccentricities caught up to him, however, when he was put on trial in 2007 for the murder of actress Lana Clarkson. The crime had occurred in Spectre's California mansion four years prior, and it would take two more years before a jury would convict the disgraced former icon. Specter was given a sentence of 19 years to life for the crime during which he claimed that Clarkson had accidentally ended her own life by kissing the gun. In 2021, Specter died in prison from complications due to COVID-19. His legacy will forever be that of a convicted murderer who happened to write songs. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Michael Jackson accused of sexual misconduct. The life and career of Michael Jackson was filled with some of the highest highs and the lowest lows. But there's no word whether they found any evidence against Jackson. Unfortunately, accusations of improper relations with minors began following the King of Pop, starting with the high-profile Jordan Chandler case in 1993. Jackson proclaimed and maintained his innocence and even wedded Lisa Marie Presley the following year. However, many saw the marriage as a publicity stunt. Public opinion regarding Jackson's strange behavior with young people never truly went away, especially with a new trial on similar charges arising again in 2005. Up to and since his death on June 25, 2009, the rumors have persisted. Robson and Safe Truck told us about their relationships with Jackson. Which of your favorite musicians have been the center of a huge controversy? Let us know in the comments. And that's what it is.